All right. So we finally here. We're in the cutting cycle of the debt and credit markets. So we're in the cutting cycle in terms of interest rates by the Fed. So as you can see by the title, rate cuts that come with recession aren't good for stocks. Now, why isn't this good for stocks? Well, you might be thinking, well, aren't rates going down? So that means it's easier for companies to finance. Yeah, but the rates aren't going down for that reason. Specifically, they're actually going down because they think the job market is not going to be as strong. They think inflation is cooling right now. And a lot of times when inflation is cooling and you have an economy that starts to slow down, you always have the Fed overcorrect. If you don't understand it, it's very simple. Monetary policy is done by the Federal Reserve. They're going to go ahead and make these interest rate decisions, whether it's up or down. It takes about nine months, nine months for that rate change to actually start to permeate and go through the economy. So what happens is they're always going to be behind the curve on this. Right. So they're always going to be playing catch up. They're always going to be raising too late. They're always going to be lowering too late. Right. And that's because they depend on data that is coming out. That's a lot of times it's just is not even correct. Right. As you can see by the rural and labor statistics, when they came out, what was their correction for the jobs? They said that eight hundred eighteen thousand less jobs were created than initially reported. Right. So in part, it's kind of not the Fed's fault. If they're getting bad data and then they're making decisions based off of that data, but at the same token, they should know that that's bad data. They should know that that data is politically manipulated and motivated, right? So a president is going to do everything in their power with their cabinet to make sure that whatever is getting reported income and jobs wise is a good thing. Why? Especially in the election year, because why? They want to get reelected or they want their party to be the one it gets reelected. So we got to look at this pragmatically though, right? Interest rates going down. I was a stock worker during 2007, 2008, 2009, 2011, 2012. I was a stock worker during then, right? Most of the people that you're listening to, they don't have any professional experience in the market. And that doesn't mean that they don't know anything, but it's different when you're actually dealing with people's money and you're actually dealing with people that got skin in the game and they have retirement that they're thinking about and they're having their kids' college that they're thinking about. They just want to retire themselves. So it's a lot of things that you have to think about when you're looking at this thing. You have to have a macro understanding of this if you're going to work in the industry. You you can't work in the industry on the sales side, especially the retail sales side, like I was, if you don't understand the general economy, what's going on. You have to understand these things. Certain key elements that you want to understand when you look at these markets, okay? One of the key things that you really need to understand, and I'm not, I don't really like to get political because most people, when they get political, they don't even know the basis of the policies that they're talking about. They don't know that the money is controlling. Well, they know that the money is controlling the policies that most likely they're going to be discussing, but they don't show the connection. And that's where the average person gets lost. So right now, look at this. I know it's backwards, but the stock trade is almanac, right? Everyone should have this. If you got a 401k, if you got money invested in the market for a long term, you need to have this. Why? Because there's just basic things that you need to understand, right? So I'm going to go through just a few of these things talking about the presidential cycle. And the reason I'm focusing on this is because why we are in a year, an election year, right? So there are certain tenets that exist when it comes to an election year, right? So here are going to be some of them right now coming straight for the book. This is not me making it up. This is not my own rendition. This is uh, her Hirsch's uh, team and their rendition. Okay, then I'm going to read you just some of the, the some of the headlines. All right, so these are the the headline topics. First five months better when party retains White House. Okay, so basically, it's saying that if they're the party retains it, then the first five months tend to do better in the market. Right. We can be a major um, war can be a major factor in presidential races. Right. What's going on right now? What kind of war do we have? Right. Proxy war. Right. We're not in we're not in the war, but essentially we're backing two wars. Right. The war in uh, Israel, which some may say it's not really even a war. Right. And they say it's more or less like a genocide. OK. Now go get political. Do I believe it's a genocide? Yes. Um, but nonetheless, it's a war. Okay. It's happening. You war in Ukraine, right? So those are things that you have to consider. Um, 
only six election year uh, declines greater than 5% since 1896, right? So basically saying that uh, the presidential election years are the second best performing year of the four year cycle, producing losses, uh, producing losses of greater than 5% in only six of those 32 years, right? It says the incumbent party uh, lost power in five of those years, five losses occurred at the end of the second term. Franklin Delano Roosevelt defeated Hoover in 1932 and was reelected to an unprecedented third term as World War II ravaged Europe, right? So these things are real. Like these things have statistical significance, right? All right, so let's cover another one, right? So looking at right here, market bottoms two years after a presidential election. Hmm, okay. So it says a takeover of the White House by the opposing party in the past eight decades, 1960, 1968, 1976, 1980, 1992, 2000, 2008, 2016, and 2020 has resulted in a bottom within two years, except 1994, a flat year, right? So I'm not going to read like throughout this whole thing. Like I'll do like a full one on YouTube where I'm going to go through each one. I'm going to read all of the things out, but like, these are just some of the things, right? That are important for you to look at. And these are some of the cycles that you have to take in consideration when you have a long-term match because a long-term outlook with your stocks, because unless you are going to just not pay attention to anything as it regards to your stock portfolio, like you literally just like, man, I got too much stuff. I'm working hard. I got kids. I got a house. I got a mortgage, whatever. You can have none of those things. You just work a lot. Right. And you're like, I just don't have the mind space. And I get it. Trust me. It, the world is filled with a lot of things. And we have a, an inundation with information now because we have access to so much of it. But there's certain things you got to focus on. And this is one of those things that you got to focus on if you are a long term stock and bond holder. You know, these things, they matter. They matter a lot. So, you know, like I said, I'm going to post a full one on YouTube where I'm going to go through all of these things because, as you can see, there's a bunch of them. Right one page right but these things are really important and they really do make a difference in terms of you being able to understand what may make sense for you in terms of what you have in your portfolio or how to you know increase something that's in your portfolio all those things matter you have to understand like i said though that credit and debt cycle you have to understand the credit and the debt cycle all of this is based off of credit and the debt cycle ultimately why because it's the expansion and the contraction of the money supply that creates bubbles and pops them. And within those, you have presidential cycles. You know, you're going to need to utilize, uh, understand the business cycle. You're going to need to utilize second rotation. All of those things work hand in hand, though. It's like a top, it's not like it is a top down approach. And this is what institutional fund managers, like they know this stuff. Like these people, they they have subscriptions because you know you can get a subscription to the Stock Traders Almanac website, and they have a ton of data sets that you can look at that are actually you know you can actually understand. So to really wrap this up, I just want you to to understand that um, this cycle that's happening right now, you're probably going to see a downturn. Most people are seeing it now. Um, it's been kind of self-evident if you've really been paying attention, but most likely we're going to have a significant downturn sometime in 2025. And it's going to include having the house and market go down. Um, I'm actually working on a video uh, set where I'm going to be going to break down like private credit and uh, what's called in-kind loans. So payment in-kind loans, which are just these crazy loans that are being established in private, but then they're allowing them to sometimes not get paid, to defer their payment so that they don't go into default. There's just all kind of bombs in the basement that are being sealed in right now. And ultimately, I think that you're going to see a lot of this market downturn exacerbated extremely by the opaque private equity credit markets that are happening. And it's going to come from these payment in kind loans. I mean, they even have payment in kind securities, right? Where you don't even have the security, but it's like, oh, you have something that suffice that similar to that, to that security. Oh, we'll take that then. So having that in the debt market, 
it's not good for counterparty risk. That means that people are not able to ascertain institutions, investors are not able to ascertain the actual risk that they have with that counterparty that they're getting in bed with, right? Whether that be buying their stocks, buying their bonds, buying a portion of their portfolio, whatever the, the product or service uh, suite that they have, you have to understand that these markets, you're not going to learn what you really need to learn by looking at CNBC, right? You're, you're not going to learn what you need to, to learn in the markets by looking at the, the regular news, the general news outlet media. You're going to have to do some digging. You're not going to do some reading, reading. I am a, I am a huge proponent of reading because there's certain context that you get when you understand something from reading it. And the person that has to produce that writing material, you're getting higher quality information. Why? Because that's not something that they can just shoot off the hip, right? They had to think about it, write it, put it through a rough draft a couple of times before they produce it. So they know that whatever they're putting out, it's a solid, well thought out thought that you're reading, right? So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of reading about this kind of stuff than just looking at a video. Right. Looking at videos are good. I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just that it's a supplement. It should be, excuse me, it should be just a supplement to what you're consuming in terms of your information. Right. Even if you read just on the regular day to day news. Right. If you read that versus just looking at it on the news, it's less sensationalism in it. Right. You start to get more to the hardcore facts. And that's what we want as an investor. We want to get the hardcore facts.